Research is the foundation of science. As such, understanding research design is essential for basic science literacy. Let's begin by discussing some of the basic components of research. The first term you should be comfortable with is variable. Simply put, a variable is any factor that varies within a specified group or population. Some examples are height, weight, caffeine intake, and blood pressure. So, if we're interested in whether caffeine affects blood pressure, we might want to research this by measuring the variables, one, daily caffeine intake, and two, blood pressure. The second term that's important is population. In research design, this refers to the entire group that we're interested in knowing more about. For example, if we're interested in knowing whether sugar makes kids hyperactive, the group or population we're interested in are all children. If we're interested in Alzheimer's disease, then the population would be all people with Alzheimer's disease. You can see that the population is dependent on the research question. As you can imagine, a population can be very large. For instance, there are a lot of children in the world, making it impossible to test them all. So, to make things more manageable, we can instead take a sample or subset of the population of interest. The important thing is to make sure that the sample is representative of the population meaning that the sample has the same overall makeup as the larger population. You wouldn't want to ask a question about children and then only test females, because the population of children, of course, is made up of more than just girls. If we want the results that are applicable to the population we're interested in, then we need our sample to match that population. Okay, now that we have some of the basics under our belt, we can move on to specific types of research designs. In general, we can divide research designs into three different categories. The first category is what's known as descriptive research. Descriptive research, as the name implies, involves describing phenomena, like how many hours of TV do most people watch per day? Or what type of behaviors do children engage in on the playground? Or what types of study habits do university students employ? These are all examples of questions that can be addressed with descriptive research. The next type of research design is what's known as correlational research. Correlational research involves looking at the relationships between variables. For instance, how is X related to Y? When X goes up, does Y also go up? Or when X goes up, does Y go down? The third type of research design is what's known as experimental design. Experimental design is considered the gold standard in the research world as it involves not just the measurement, but also the manipulation of specific variables. This type of design allows us to make the strongest conclusions. And in experimental design, what we're asking is whether or not something causes something else. For instance, does my new drug cause a decrease in depression-like symptoms? That concludes our introductory look at the three types of research design. Descriptive research, correlational research, and experimental research.